Hey, it's Lindsay from e Love Science. I'm the sales manager for Medicine Market. And uh, we are so honored to join this webinar to meet every participant online. And uh, as you know, that uh, e e Love Science is founded in 2009, and our major products uh, covers the ELAS kit, the tablet medicine kit, uh, fluoroscopy antibodies, uh, as well as the cell culture mediums. Yeah, in this year, we start to uh, promote our uh, cell culture products and a new brand called Priscilla. And uh, uh, in today's topic, we will give their basic knowledge about our antibodies. Uh, we have an advanced uh, antibody development, development platform, and we can provide over 15,000 primary antibodies and uh, secondary antibodies covering the application fields uh, of ELISA, fluoroscopy, uh, Western blotting, IHC, uh, IF, IP, and all of the common applications that you will use in your scientific uh, research. And at the same time, we have the in-house QC to guarantee every product uh, can be can reach the highest uh, standard to the uh, world class. And our workplace are located in five different buildings, including a uh, 12,000 square meter office area. And uh, we also have a new factory uh, of 15,000 square meter of our cell culture manufacturing. And we also have a 6,000 square meter GMP plant for our manufacture of IVD products. Okay. And uh, through excellent R&D and uh, our high standard QM, yeah, we can provide the professional services and the reliable regions to every research in the world. And here I'd like to introduce our speaker, Dr. Sanders. Yeah, Dr. Sanders uh, works at, as our antibody and protein scientist uh, in her first uh, two years in e lab science. And then she is promoted as our BD manager in this year to uh, deliver the um, courses and uh, training courses and webinars to every research. So now let's welcome Dr. Sanders. Thank you, Lizzie. Assalamu alaikum and good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Sundas Qureshi from eLab Science, and today's webinar is about demystifying antibodies, uh, their types, mechanisms, and the strategic selection. Um, I'm sorry, pardon me for my voice because I just got my sore throat. So I hope you won't mind that. So, um, um, today, we will be learning uh, multiple concepts uh, in this presentation, and we also have our technical support team here with us. So if you have any questions, problems, or queries, uh, you can uh, please type it in the chat box, and then we will answer uh, your questions one by one. Before moving forward, let me uh, give you a brief introduction of myself. Uh, I am a Pakistani national and I came to China for studying 12 years ago and since then I'm living and working here. I'm a multidisciplinary life science researcher and a business professional. I hold a PhD degree in biology from one of the top-notch universities in China, uh, that is Hua Chung Agriculture University, and then I did my postdoc in molecular biology from the same institute. Afterwards, I joined eLab Science Bioinnovation Group as a protein and antibody scientist. Over the years, I was promoted to technical support manager, and then this year I have been promoted to business development manager or business development scientist for the international market. Uh, here is my contact information. You can contact me if you need any help in your research. Uh, today, I will give a systematic uh, explanation of antibodies from different aspects, uh, some basic knowledge of uh, antibodies um, and how they work. And uh, then I will tell you how to choose an antibody for your research, uh, product lines of ELISA, their classification and uh, the product advantages. Uh, so let's move on to our first part. Uh, there is, it is uh, what is an antibody and how it works. 
as we know that when human body or animal body is invaded or attacked by foreign substances, the body produces a type of protein molecule, which is called antibody as a defense army. These foreign substances could be any substance, including microorganisms like bacteria, virus, or fungi. By definition, an antibody is a glycoprotein, also known as immunoglobin, made by immune system of the body in response to the presence of foreign substances. Uh, these can be any type of pathogens. Uh, and uh, these antibodies helps us to identify and neutralize these substances. Let us uh, have a brief look on the structure of the antibody. Uh, an ordinary antibody has a basic structure of uh, four polypeptide chains, two identical heavy chains and two identical light chains. The chains are held together by non-covalent uh, or covalent disulfide bonds called the hinge region uh, to form a Y-shaped unit. These, uh, the top of the Y-shaped structure is called the variable region uh, which, uh, or uh, fragment antigen binding region, uh, also called as FAB region, in, uh, which binds to a specific part of the antigen called an epitope. The other parts of the chain are also uh, called as constant regions. The constant region uh, of the FC determines uh, the class of uh, class and the isotope of the antibody, and it also interacts with the plasma. Here are some of the functions of antibody. The most important function it, is that it binds to the antigens on the pathogens. It also neutralizes the bacterial toxins and binds the antigen to enhance its efficiency. It also activates the immune system in case of bacterial pathogens. They also act as first line of defense. Uh, for all the mucosal surfaces. They also uh, directly attack the viral pathogens, such as you also know um, already know about COVID-19. Uh, they also ingest the um, cells by the uh, process of phagocytosis, and sometimes they also assist in the process of phagocytosis. Uh, they also um, uh, provide long-term protection against the pathogens because it persists for years after the presence of the antigen. Furthermore, few antibodies also have the capability to bind the antigen present on the pathogen. These aggregates the pathogen and they remain in the secretions. When the secretion is spelled out, the antigen is also spelled out. Uh, here you can see uh, is the um, uh, a diagrammatic description of the antigen on the left hand side and uh, you can see there are different epitopes on the um, antigen and uh, these epitopes are actually the regions where the antibodies get bind to it for uh, how the anti uh, antigen binds to the antibody it binds on the uh, top a region of the antibody structure and uh, this top region is also called as uh, paratopes. Uh, here are some of the differences between antigen and antibody. Uh, antigen are the molecules that interact with the antibodies or by T-cell receptors when the complex um, made with major uh, histocapability uh, complex. However, uh, Antibodies are synthesized by plasma cells of B cells that react with the antigen uh, who invoke their production. Antigens also include uh, components of viral proteins, uh, cell walls, capsules, and other microbes. However, uh, antibodies consist of four polypeptide chains, two light chains, and two heavy chains, forming a Y-shaped structure. Antigens are the proteins that can be nucleic acids or carbohydrates or sometimes lipids, while uh, antibodies are the glycoproteins made up of carbohydrates and amino acids. The pathogen has many epitopes, and epitopes are the regions on the antigen that interact with the antibody. However, the region of an antibody that binds with an epitope is called a paratope. 
uh, antigen causes diseases or the allergic reactions. However, uh, antibody protects the body against these diseases. Uh, antibody uh, are the high complex in structure and uh, they are uh, and their uh, composition while antibody has the simple structures antibodies are also uh, categorized in five different classes according to their location uh, each one is labeled by a letter which is attached uh, to an abbreviation of the term uh, that is immunoglobin uh, we have uh, five classes such as uh, IgM, IgG, IgE, IgD, and IgA. For uh, the functions of these immunoglobins, um, IgA is mainly found in uh, saliva, tear, mucus, or breast milk, uh, while IgD is found in the surface of um, the B cells. IgE uh, are found mainly on skin, lungs, and mucous membranes. And uh, Ig, uh, IgG is the most common antibody, which make up to 70 to 75% of all the immunoglobins in the body. It is found mainly in the blood and tissue fluids. And uh, IgG antibodies help protect your body from the viral and bacterial infections. IgM is found in... Uh, blood and lymph systems, and these are uh, the antibodies which act as the first line of defense against the infections. Now let's move on to our uh, second part. Uh, here I will uh, give you a brief introduction about the antibody classification. Uh, first, let's learn about uh, the types of antibody. Uh, there are two main types of antibodies, that is primary antibody and the secondary antibody. Uh, let's learn about the primary antibodies first. So uh, primary antibodies, uh, um, are. Uh, you can see here a simple uh, diagram. In the left picture, uh, the blue antigen is recognized by the black antibody. This black antibody can recognize the specific antigens, and this is called as the primary antibody. There is also a yellow antibody in this picture uh, with a marker M. This antibody does not bind to the antigen. In the right picture, uh, the yellow antibody does not uh, bind to the antigen below, but it binds to our primary antibody. In other words, the secondary antibody is actually an anti-primary antibody, which is a bit difficult to say, so it is called as secondary antibody. Now that we know that the difference between primary and antibodies, um, how do we distinguish between the primary antibodies and uh, secondary antibodies when looking at the names of the antibodies? Uh, first, look at the uh, primary antibody. The primary antibody binds to the specific exogenous protein, so the monoclonal antibody against a certain uh, protein. The secondary antibody is an antibody against the antibody, so uh, the antibody is the immunoglobin. So in fact, the secondary antibody is an, an immunoglobin uh, against an animal. So the common antibody subtypes are IgG, IgM, or IgA. So our secondary antibody is an antibody against a certain immunoglobin. Okay, uh, the ordinary antibody is also a pure antibody. So after uh, identifying the target protein, it cannot be detected because it does not carry any label. So it needs to be matched with a labeled antibody. <laughs> which can be labeled uh, by HRP, biotin, or FITC, etc. Basic differences between the primary antibody and the secondary antibody are that uh, primary antibody binds to a specific antigen in the sample. However, secondary antibody binds to the primary antibody. Um, primary antibody also binds to the specific antigen of a protein. Uh, this is a bit trickier to remember, but uh, please uh, be attentive on this. And the secondary antibody binds to the uh, FC or FAB region of the primary antibody. 
uh, uh, primary antibody also detects the presence of a specific antigen in the sample. However, a secondary antibody detects the presence of primary antibody in the sample. When uh, we uh, do any kind of experiment, primary antibody is the first one to be added, and then we add the secondary antibody. Uh, primary antibody does not have any detectable tag. However, the secondary antibody contains a detectable tag such as a fluorophore uh, like FITC or PE, etc., or uh, HRP conjugate. A any tag uh, is a tag to the secondary antibody. <laughs> Okay, uh, now the question arises how antibodies are produced. An antigen or the immunogen uh, is injected to the animals, uh, which induces them to produce and secrete high levels of antibodies into the blood. And uh, several months after uh, the repeated immunization, the blood and um, uh, including serum or plasma is uh, collected and the antibodies are purified by methods uh, I will describe later. The antibodies are generated by this method are called as uh, polyclonal antibodies and uh, they are derived from different B cells, B clones or resulting antiserum, which contains numerous, numerous different antigens that react to the uh, injected immunogen. Okay, there are uh, two different types of antibodies based on clonality. Uh, first one is a monoclonal antibody and the second one is polyclonal antibody. Monoclonal antibodies uh, react with the specific epitope on a given antigen. However, polyclonal antibodies react with various epitopes on a given antigen or in a cell, different antigens uh, to different epitopes. Sometimes uh, in one uh, cell, there are several antigens and several antigens also have the several epitopes. So the antigens can uh, bind to uh, the antibody can bind to one epitope on uh, the one uh, region and the second epitope on the uh, second antigen with the second region. Uh, here are uh, is uh, um, a description of a monoclonal antibody. Monoclonal antibodies are also called as M ABS, and these are the proteins which we um, uh, produce in the laboratories that act like proteins, um, uh, which are called antibodies uh, in our bodies. Uh, monoclonal antibodies have transformed the modern medicine uh, with groundbreaking treatments across the spectrum of diseases, including cancer, autoimmune conditions, and the infectious diseases. To develop the monoclonal antibodies, we inject the antigen or the immunogen uh, to, into mice or rats um, intraperitoneal multiple times. Meanwhile, we also culture uh, myeloma cells. And after immunization, uh, splenocytes are collected and then uh, fused with the myeloma cells. This fusion gives us hybridoma cells, which is then subjected to antibody purification and later uh, subtype identification. Uh, an antigen, uh, when it is injected into the animals, induce them to produce the high uh, level of uh, antibodies into the blood. These uh, antibodies are called as polyclonal antibodies. Uh, several months after the um, uh, repeated immunization, we collect the uh, blood, uh, blood, including plasma and serum, and antibodies are uh, purified. Uh, in the, in this one, uh, uh, these antibodies uh, antibodies generated by these uh, this method are uh, polyclonal antibodies because these are uh, derived from the B cell clones, and then uh, the resulting antiserum contains numerous different antibodies that react to the injected immunogen. Here are some of the pros and cons of um, monoclonal antibodies and polyclonal antibodies. 
Uh, monoclonal antibodies can produce large quantities of identical antibodies and uh, there is no uh, batch to batch difference. Uh, we also have high specificity uh, to a single epitope in case of uh, monoclonal antibodies. <coughs> and that is why they reduce the probability of cross reactivity. Uh, they can also provide better results in assays uh, requiring quantification of the protein levels or the expression of protein. Uh, however, um, they are significantly more expensive to produce and require significantly more time uh, and uh, to develop the uh, hybridized clone. Uh, there are uh, small changes in the epitope structure often render to the monoclonal antibody unable to detect the uh, target protein. And uh, these are less ideal for applications requiring quick uh, capture of the target protein. However, on the other hand, um, polyclonal antibodies are inexpensive to produce. Uh, they are quick to produce and purified antibody ready to use in under four months. And they are very easy to store as well. And they are highly stable and tolerant of pH and uh, other buffers. Uh, however, uh, there are uh, variabilities between the batches produced in different animals or at different times. And a uh, higher potential of uh, cross reactivity uh, is due to recognizing multiple uh, epitopes. And uh, the affinity purification of the serum will typically require to uh, minimize the cross reactivity. <clears throat> so the very difficult question, how to choose an antibody, a pain for every researcher who is working for the antibodies. So uh, there are several methods or several uh, things need to be uh, taken into consideration while selecting any uh, antibody. So if you are selecting or buying any commercial antibody, you should carefully examine the source, purity and immunogen type. Apart from that, ask the supplier whether they have tested these antibodies under the experimental conditions such as IHC, IF, ELISA, etc. And can they provide the supporting data as well? There are three main aspects to look for in commercial antibody, um, which are specificity, selectivity, and the repu uh, reproducibility, uh, which means whether these includes control, uh, are these genetically um, verified, or if the antibodies can identify multiple uh, epitopes for the specificity. For the selection, you need to check its expression levels, dilution and titration, and what kind of buffers need, needed to be used. And uh, repro reproducibility can be checked by the experimental replication. Uh, are they biologically capable to reproduce? And is there any existence of these antibodies in their literature, in the literature or not? Now I will give you seven most important tips to choose an antibody. First of all, you must learn your target protein very well. Gather all the data you can from the uh, from different platforms uh, for your target protein, uh, such as from the data banks uh, like NCBI, GeneCard, Uniport, uh, Mouse Genome Informatics, Rat Genome Database, etc. Then uh, you have to look in uh, for the peer-reviewed uh, published articles in the um, international journals. Uh, afterwards, uh, lastly, Google is your strong ally in this quest of learning. Then you have to confirm the sequence by using uh, the nucleotide blast or the protein blast in uh, NCBI. And be sure you can get more than 99% of the homology. Afterwards, uh, confirm which applications have been validated for the antibody which matches your uh, target antigen, like whether it is validated for IHC, IF, uh, flow cytometry or ELISA, or uh, there are several others which include uh, ELISA capture, ELISA detector, or even ELISA capture detector antibody. 
Uh, now, uh, number four is that some of the samples uh, is also very important aspect to note that uh, species uh, actually is the, uh, of the sample is important and you must uh, look in for the cross reactivity, whether uh, there is a cross reactivity with certain species such as mouse, chicken or um, whichever. And what kind of uh, cell lines are you using, uh, such as uh, are you using a HAP G2 uh, or um, any other cell lines like um, insect cell lines S2 uh, or S94 and <coughs> other um, if you are using um, uh, primary cells like mouse fibroblast or rat adrenaline uh, medulla cells or if you are working uh, for the yeast cells <laughs> and you also have to look for the host uh, which is used to produce the uh, that particular antibody such as mouse rabbit rat or goat or uh, sometimes for polyclonal antibodies we also use um, alpaca etc Okay, the fifth uh, tip is that you also need to confirm the staining index according to different hosts such as mouse, rabbit or chicken, etc. Uh, different isotopes such as uh, IgM, IgG, IG2. <clears throat> and then you have to appropriately select the dye. The dyes can come in different colors. Um, and they have their specific nomenclature, uh, such as FITC, PE, uh, APC, um, uh, PARCP, etc. And you have also you should also consider if you are selecting flow cytometric antibodies, you should also consider there should be no overlapping between different dyes. Um, but if uh, you couldn't find any suitable uh, antibody in the market, what would you do at that time? So uh, you have three options. If you want to perform the experiments like uh, immunofluorescence, immunohistochemistry or immunoprecipitation, you can try IFIHC or IP validated antibodies. Uh, however, if uh, you uh, can also use uh, polyclonal antibodies because they have um, more uh, chances to work with because it can recognize multiple epitopes. Lastly, you can go for antibody customization service from eLab Science. We provide customization uh, service for all different kinds of antibodies, such as monoclonal antibodies um, using uh, two different technologies, uh, such as hybridoma technology and single B cell culture. Uh, secondly, we also provide a polyclonal antibody services, uh, which includes um, the standard service as well as modified uh, polyclonal antibodies. And we also provide services to customize nanobodies as well. OK, the last tip for today is uh, the secondary antibody selection. How do we select a secondary antibody? For the secondary antibody, first of all, you have to look for different hosts, whether you are working with mouse and uh, rabbit or chicken. And if uh, you are selecting the uh, secondary antibody, it should be anti-mouse, anti-rabbit or anti-chicken, and it should be uh, combined with the immunoglobin. Uh, when you are working with uh, different isotopes, uh, you can uh, use different isotopes such as IgG1, IgM or Ig2, etc. And these uh, hosts uh, can also, uh, whenever you select the uh, secondary antibody, you can judge it by its name that this antibody is uh, anti, a primary host can be mouse or whatever, and then the um, uh, immunoglobin. Then uh, you can also um, uh, use uh, to, uh, different applications. Um, which uh, secondary antibody is validated with these antibodies such as Western blot, immunofluorescence, immunohistochemistry, ELISA or flow cytometry. Um, or you can also uh, check their enzymatic reaction. Uh, for example, which kind of tags, which kind of conjugates they have such as HRP or um, HIST tag or GST tag, etc.
And uh, secondly, uh, you can also look for the fluorescent dyes such as FITC, PE, or PARCP, etc. Okay, now here uh, we have uh, reached to the end of our third part. Let's move on to our uh, next part, uh, eLab Science Antibody Products. Here I will tell you uh, what we can provide you at eLab Science. Okay, at eLab Science, uh, we have four different platforms such as featured antibody product, which includes a uh, monoclonal antibody, uh, polyclonal antibody, and secondary antibodies. Antibody validated platform uh, gives you antibodies which have been validated by several methods such as ELISA, IHC, and IF, etc. Some highly used antibodies in the research are also available, and our antibodies have excellent quality and high rep reproducibility. Okay, uh, for the monoclonal antibodies, uh, these are highly homogeneous antibodies produced by single B cell clone, targeting only a specific antigenic uh, epitope. And um, compared to uh, polyclonal antibodies, they have the advantages of uh, lower uh, non-specific uh, cross-reactivity, high specificity, and uh, little batch-to-batch -batch variability. Uh, so, eLab science monoclonal antibodies from mouse sources are the antibodies secreted by hybrid uh, cancer cells that fuse with malignant bone marrow cancer cells by isolating unique cell clones. They also have the characteristics of high potency and the stable quality. And we have about uh, 724 products uh, for the monoclonal antibodies. Uh, polyclonal antibodies can recognize multiple uh, antigenic epitopes and cause the uh, precipitation reactions. Uh, and these also have the advantages of a short preparation time and low cost and are widely used in scientific research and diagnosis. At eLab Science, polyclonal antibodies have very high affinity. Uh, so we have compiled high quality polyclonal antibody products from various uh, species and applications, hoping to help you conduct more in-depth research on your topic. And we have uh, more than 13,000 products for polyclonal antibodies. <coughs> Um, secondary antibodies uh, are the antibodies which bind to the primary antibodies and uh, eLab Science offers various high quality uh, conjugated and conjugated secondary antibodies which can be applied in fluorescence detection of the primary antibody and they are also suitable for conventional applications such as uh, immunofluorescence, immunohistochemistry, western blot and the flow cytometry. The expression level of the uh, internal reference proteins and tag proteins can also provide a reference for the uh, ch changes in the target uh, protein expression levels, ensuring that any changes in the target protein levels are due to differences in samples and are not caused by the experimental procedures. So we have compiled all the high quality uh, internal controls and tag antibodies for you. Uh, these uh, are commonly used uh, cytoplasmic internal uh, control mainly include um, uh, GA, PDH, uh, beta actin and beta tubulin and uh, also the conventional tag antibodies such as histag, GFP tag and GST tag. You can also choose according to your needs and um, you can also learn more about our products. Uh, for the tag control and secondary antibodies, we have about uh, um, uh, 119 products and uh, for the tag control antibodies, we have uh, 91 products separately. Okay, uh, eLab Science flow cytometric antibodies uh, are more optimized uh, and uh, with the labeling technology and have multiple fluorochrome dyes uh, with a wide range of target markers for your choice. Uh, we can uh, offer 14 different fluorophores uh, with um, uh, more than 2,500 uh, products. And uh, you can uh, quickly find the products you need by searching according to the target markers 
uh, reaction species and the conjugates. Uh, here are uh, some of the applications I have been mentioning throughout my presentation. Uh, IHC, WB, IF, ELISA, and uh, IP, and some also with the dot plot. These are the results which are um, given by uh, our um, antibodies. Uh, now, uh, here we have also antibody validation applications. Uh, um, um, Almost 36 antibodies have been validated by ELISA. More than um, about 67,000 um, uh, IH uh, antibodies have been validated by IHC. More than more than 2,000 antibodies have been validated by IF, and uh, about uh, 87,000 um, antibodies. Um, will give you the validation of uh, Western blot. Okay, um, as you know that the history of human society is a history that human beings constantly fight against viruses and uh, overcome various um, viruses through the knowledge, innovation and the technological advancements. Uh, malaria, black death, uh, Spanish flu, Ebola virus, and SARS-CoV-2, the COVID-19. Um, they have uh, taken many people's lives. So in um, particular, uh, in the process of human civilization uh, development, we are suffering from infectious diseases caused by the viruses. Every time we, when we, uh, a new virus appears, a scientists need to spread a, a lot of time looking for the ways to deal with the virus. So eLab Science has been committed to provide effective solutions for the researchers uh, to support the study of infectious diseases, which includes um, uh, COVID-19, SARS-CoV, MERS-CoV, and other virus like uh, HIV virus, HPV virus, and so on. These antigens and antibodies are specifically developed to help science uh, researchers and to learn more about the virus and its infectious mechanisms. Okay, let's move on to our last part uh, of eLab Science Services. Uh, here are some of the service highlights. Uh, at eLab Science, we provide uh, one-stop antibody services from gene to antibody. We have more than 20 years of experience in uh, service of um, um, customization of antibodies and with the uh, success rate of more than 95%. We can also provide a wide range of validation programs uh, such as ELISA, uh, Western Blot, uh, IHC, IF, and many more. And lastly, we um, provide the services, of, um, individual services for our customers. For the customization service, we used a multiple hosts such as mouse, rat, rabbit, guinea pig, uh, goat, chicken, alpaca, monkey, and many other uh, hosts which um, are needed for the um, immunization of the animals. The first one is the mouse and rat monoclonal antibody service. In this service, uh, we first prepare the immunogen and immunize uh, the mice or rat with the immunogen and uh, um, also culture myeloma cells. Then uh, we uh, um, um, fuel, uh, fuse the a hybridoma and the myeloma cells uh, to uh, find out the positive clones and then culture this um, hybridoma culture and purify the antibody. And lastly, we also perform our QC and subtype uh, identification. Here is the com are the complete steps. Uh, we, uh, for the uh, specification, uh, we can also use a recombinant protein uh, expression and um, peptide synthesis uh, for the immunogen preparation, which uh, takes about four to six weeks of the time. 
then uh, we uh, use five to six uh, bal bc immunization and uh, mice uh, for the immunization and uh, then uh, do the anti serum titer and the elaza test after that we do uh, the hybridoma fusion and screen the positive clones and uh, we also subject this to two rounds of subcloning after that, uh, we culture the hybridoma cells and uh, purify the antibody. Lastly, uh, we perform the QC by um, subjecting it to SDS page verification. And uh, we also do the antibody subtype verification. And uh, all of this uh, uh, duration will uh, take about uh, four, four to five months. Then we have uh, um, rabbit monoclonal antibody service. It is uh, approximately the same, uh, but what we do is after the immunogen preparation, we immunize, immunize the rabbit instead of rat or mice, and then uh, we draw the uh, spleen or uh, PMBC cells. And uh, afterwards, we sort out the single B cell and then culture them instead of making a hybridoma. Then uh, we subject it to uh, antibody sequence and lastly antibody uh, expression and the verification. Here is the service specifications. Um, uh, we use about two to four uh, rabbits uh, for uh, immunization. And uh, we also um, sequence about five to 10 different positive clones. Uh, we also uh, use expression vector uh, to con uh, construct for the uh, small scale um, recombinant antibody expression. And once that expression is successful and verified, we uh, can also offer a large scale recombinant antibody expression. This also takes about uh, six months, uh, five to six months. The, another uh, service we can provide is the antibody discovery by the phage display. Uh, this also can provide you nanobodies because in this one uh, we uh, immunize alpaca after the antigen preparation and then we consider, uh, construct the uh, naive library and subject it to biopanning and then screen the library. Afterwards, we do the antibody sequences and expression and then uh, we subject it to SPR analysis. <clears throat> uh, here is the um, uh, service specifications. Uh, first of all, we construct the library and screen it. Then we also subject it to ELISA screening. And lastly, we do the DNA extraction for and the antibody sequencing. Uh, another service is for the polyclonal antibody service. Uh, when the customer uh, provide its request, we uh, discuss it uh, with the customer completely and sign the contract. Then uh, we do the peptide synthesis and conjugation. And after that, we immunize uh, the host. It's either mouse, uh, rat, uh, goat, alpaca, monkey, chicken, any other host. Um, there are multiple hosts used for polyclonal antibodies. And after that, we purify uh, the antibody and then uh, subject it to the QC. Here is the specification. Uh, polyclonal antibody takes uh, a very less time, just about uh, uh, two to three months uh, for the completion of the whole uh, process. There is another um, uh, th type of polyclonal antibody service, which includes modified polyclonal antibody. In this one, we can uh, modify, when we prepare the immunogen, we can modify the um, uh, immunogen uh, for uh, phosphorylation, uh, methylation, acetylation, and uh, all these kind of modifications. And this process also takes um, not more than uh, three months. Okay, so that's all for uh, Dr. Sam's pre presentation. Yeah, I think we have learned about how to uh, understand our antigen antibody and how to select a suitable antibody uh, based on the 
uh, seven tips uh, interdicted uh, interdict by Dr. Sanders. Uh, if you have any questions, you can, yeah, you can type in the, the chat box. Yeah.